Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to apply effects destructively in Reaper. Now, I got the idea for this video where someone asked on a forum for this kind of workflow, where you're working through a song on an audio file and you want to apply effects just to certain sections, but you want to print it or add the effect destructively, but still have the option of going back to the original file. So this is the workflow that I came up with. I have a guitar track in front of me. Let's see what it sounds like. Now what I'm gonna do in this video is just an example, but we can apply it to any effect that you wanna add. So for this guitar part, I'm gonna add an EQ on these guitar notes that sound a little too bright. like this one right here. So I'm gonna make those notes sound warmer by filtering out the top end. But I don't wanna do it to the entire track, just on certain notes. And then we're gonna apply it destructively. Now in Reaper, we can apply it to each item and leave it there in real time. But depending on the plugin, that could take up a lot of resources. Let's say you have 300 items with a different plugin on each, that's a lot of CPU processing that's being wasted. So by doing it destructively, it's not gonna use any DSP, as you'll see. So let's start with just these two notes here. And what we wanna do is separate them. So I'm gonna select them like this, then I'm gonna go to the menus under item and go to split items at time selection. We could also trigger this action by hitting shift S. Hit Shift S and it splits it into its own item. But if we zoom in, we can notice it's fading out and then fading in. I personally prefer to have a crossfade. So that we're crossfading into the effect and then back out of it. So let's undo that split. Let's go to our preferences. And if we go down here to media item defaults, we could choose this option. Overlap and crossfade items when splitting. So this is going to crossfade instead of fading out and fading in. Let's make the crossfade a bit longer. We'll make it 50 milliseconds. And we'll leave it with the default shape right here. So now if we split it, Shift S, it creates a crossfade fading out and fading in to the effect and out of the effect. So it should sound smoother as we add the effect just to this item. So now we add the effect to the item. We'll right click, go to take, show effects chain for active take, and let's add an EQ plugin. Use the re-EQ, and you see it shows up right here. Now this EQ is on this item. It's not on the track as a whole. So let's adjust it. Now to get rid of the top end, we can use the parametric EQ and bring down the upper mid range, but I'm gonna do it more extreme. I'm gonna create a low pass filter, which will remove the top end completely. And let's see what that sounds like. Let's go a bit darker. Maybe a little less. Before. It stands out as being too bright. So now we want to apply this effect destructively. So what we'll do is we'll go to the item, select it, right click it, and go down here to apply track or take effect to the item as a new take. Now I'm gonna choose mono output because the effect is mono. If we choose this one, 
It's going to make a stereo file. And because the EQ is mono, we don't need to do that. So we'll choose this one. Apply track or take effect to item as a new take. So it creates a new take right here. And the effect is applied to it destructively. So we can hear it back with this take. And this take is the old one, which still has the plugin on there running in real time. So it sounds the same, but now we can remove it by holding on Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac. Now it's gone. So this is the old one, and this is the new one. Or if we want to keep the setting we processed, we can undo that, go back to the effect, right click it, and make the effect offline. This way it's not using any DSP, and we can always go back to the original version. or use the new one that's recorded with the effect on there. Now we can go through the song repeating the same process. Now a quicker way of doing this is to add the effect to the track and then bypass it. And you'll see why this helps. Open it back up, put it online, and drag it to the track. Now the effect is on the track but we can bypass it either here or right over here. So we can see that the effect is bypassed because the button is now red. Let's make this one offline again. And now we can go through the song, finding all the sections we need to fix. The next note is this one right here. So we'll select it, hit Shift S, it makes a new item. Then we can open up the effect from here, even though it's bypassed, and just drop it right on here. And now we can tweak it to taste. Make it a bit darker. Or a bit less. And as soon as we're happy with it, just apply it. Select it, right click it, apply take effects to item as new take. And then we could deactivate it right here, or just delete it altogether. And just work away through the whole song. Now let's say we want a quick way to add this one setting to each item we separate. We could do that with a custom action. So let's go to our actions, create a new custom action, and in our filter, let's type in split item. And we could choose down here to split items at time selection, which is what we were doing before. Now let's go to the filter and type in toggle effects. Then we can choose Toggle Effects Bypass for current track. Let's add that here. And in fact, let's add two of them. You'll see why in a bit. Now we'll type in Apply Effects. And then choose the option we chose before. Apply Track Effects or Take Effects to items with mono output. This is also going to create a new take. We'll drag it over. But I'm going to put it in between the two toggle effects bypass actions. So what's going to happen is it's going to split our item at the time selection, and it's going to toggle the effects bypass for the current track. So it's going to turn it on, then it's going to apply it to the item we just created, and it's going to turn it back off or make it bypassed again afterwards. We'll give it a name. And now we'll give it a keystroke. I'm going to use Control A, but you can use any keystroke that you're not currently using. So now I can close this, 
And now we'll select this section right here for our guitar. So now we're gonna hit that keystroke. It's gonna split this item. It's gonna turn this effect on, which is bypassed now. It's gonna apply the effect to this item, creating a new take. And it's gonna bypass this one again, all in one step. Happens pretty fast. And now, for this take, it's already applied. And the bypass, or the original one, is still right here. So we can always go right back to it. So now we can very quickly go section by section through the song. Let's select this one here. Hit the keystroke. It applies the effect to a new take. And just like that, we can work through our entire song, adding effects destructively to each thing we select. And we always have the option of going back and choosing the previous take before we applied those effects. So we can always go back and undo it if we go too far. But this custom action is only gonna work if you wanna use the same preset each time. If you wanna tweak it for each section, you have to do it the first way. And that's pretty much it. That's applying effects destructively in Reaper. I hope you learned something, I hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh!